Thank you for joining. With this lesson, we will wrap up the introduction to controllers. To conclude this initial section on controllers, I'll explain the difference between two important concepts the I action result interface and the abstract class action result. Students often ask about the distinction between I action result and action result, making it one of the most frequently asked questions on this topic. In the next lesson, we will begin learning about the controller based abstract class, SQL Server, SQL Server Management Studio, Entity Framework, Swagger, and various other topics. So it will involve more in depth explanations about Netcore MVC. Before we begin, let's revisit the official C Sharp documentation to refresh our understanding of what interfaces and abstract classes are. When we consult the official documentation, we find the following explanation for abstract classes. Use the abstract modifier in a class declaration to indicate that a class is intended only to be a base class of other classes, not instantiated on its own. And for the interface, an interface defines a contract. Any class or struct that implements that contract must provide an implementation of the members defined in this interface. I'll rephrase the official documentation and provide additional explanations for better understanding. The abstract modifier in a C-sharp class declaration serves to indicate that the class is meant to act as a base for other classes and should not be directly instantiated. It enforces a rule. You cannot create instances of an abstract class. Instead, you can only create objects from its concrete non-abstract subclasses. For instance, the action result class is abstract within the ISP Netcorm framework. This is because the framework intends to prevent developers from altering the behavior of this class. It's essential to keep the action result class consistent to avoid unintended changes that might cause unexpected behavior or break existing code. Consequently, we can only use the predefined logic provided by the action result class internally, such as content result and JSON result, among others. This logic was implemented by the Netcore team. The rationale behind not altering the action result class is to ensure our code remains stable and doesn't introduce bugs. An interface is like a set of rules that a class must follow. It specifies a list of methods, properties, events, and so on that a class must provide if it implements that interface. Action result and I action result can be used as return types. When we use action result as a return type, it's suitable if the method returns one of the predefined action result classes like content result, JSON result, and others from the action result family. However, if the return type is a custom class created by a developer or a combination of a custom class and one from the action result family, such as a JSON result, file result, and others, it's best to declare it as a return type of the iAction interface. This ensures the code will work correctly. When we implement the iAction result interface, we are essentially saying that our class will provide a standard set of functionalities available in the action result class, in addition to our custom logic if needed. This means we have the flexibility to combine our own custom class with predefined classes from action result. The iAction result interface is a public interface that's predefined in the ISP Netcore framework. While developers cannot change the interface itself, since it's part of the framework within a fixed definition, they can create their custom classes that implement the iAction result interface. These custom classes, built upon the functionality provided by the iAction result, allowing developers to define their unique result types and custom response handling logic. I'll provide you with a slide that shows what we have covered in the previous lessons. I've made a slight change to this diagram to make it easier to understand. At the bottom, I have outlined just two classes, and I have removed the other classes that we are not using in this lesson. And how to get the complete list of classes available in the action result abstract class, I'll explain later in this lesson. I have also removed the implementation of the iAction result interface. Both of the outline classes inherit from the action result abstract class. In a way, you can think of all these classes as being combined inside of the action result class, so the action result class contains these classes within it. Apologies for the long theory inter, but I felt like I had to provide it, and actually, the theory was reduced as much as I could. Now coding. I will duplicate the endpoint code and make a few changes to it. At the moment, as you can see, this endpoint uses the action result type. 
we declare the versus method of the endpoint with the return type of the action result class. As you recall from the theory section, when a method's return type is action result, it can only return classes that inherit from the abstract class. Therefore, classes like content result, JSON result, and many others that inherit from action result are available for us to use in this code block. So currently, using these two classes will not cause any issues. Everything is legitimate and correct. If we examine the definition of the content result or JSON result class instance, we will notice that it inherits from the action result abstract class. So once again, this code works perfectly and we are good to go. I will add one more if check and this if check will return the content method. As you can see, there are no errors. The method's definition states that this content method returns the content result class and the content result class inherits from the action result abstract class. So the chain is complete. All the methods and classes we are using in this endpoint ultimately point to the same place, which is the action result abstract class. This diagram reflects how our code looks now. Even though the content method inherits from the controller base class, its return type is content result class, uh, therefore we can use it here without any issues. I will quickly execute all endpoints to confirm that we have no issues using the action result class. All if conditions were triggered and the JSON result responded as well. Here I have created a simple class with straightforward logic. The my custom action class will add a custom header to the response and send back a JSON string, which it should receive as an argument. Let's update the home controller with an additional if statement that is meant to trigger the my custom action class. This is written in PC Sharp, so it should be straightforward for you to understand. So now this endpoint contains an if statement within custom logic. And by custom, I mean that I have written this class myself. Please note that this class converts the received data using a JSON result class instance. As we know, the JSON result class inherits from action result. And furthermore, the my custom action class also inherits from the action result class. To trigger this if statement, you don't need to provide any parameters, you should only use the endpoint versus. However, after accessing the URL, you may notice that nothing is displayed. There is no reply message or custom header. It appears that the if statement in the endpoint was not executed. And there are no errors or suggestions shown in Visual Studio. Returning to the theory we discussed earlier, it's important to note that in this case where we are using the my custom action class, we cannot specify action as the return type. Action result is an abstract base class and cannot be directly instantiated or returned. When you specify a return type by action result, the runtime expects an instance of a class that derives from action result. Even though the custom class itself inherits from action result and responds by the class instance of JSON result, which also inherits from action result, the endpoint is still not triggered. Let's visualize our code structure with a diagram. Currently, our code is organized like this. We have an endpoint and this endpoint specifies the action result abstract class as its return type. The code is designed so that we created a custom class that returns from an abstract class. However, this current implementation is not permitted. To make this if statement work with a custom class reply, we need to return from the iAction result interface. According to C-sharp rules, an interface allows for functionality extension. By using the iAction result interface, we can inject additional functionality into our code. The correct version of the code should look like this, where the custom class fits into the pipeline of supplied classes by action result while the iAction result interface provides us with its implemented classes. With this approach, we can now modify our code. I am changing the methods return type and the inheritance of the custom class to use the iAction result interface. Only now will this endpoint provide us with a reply. We have the string response, and in DevTools we can see our custom header. Based on this custom class, we have effectively created our own custom action result type by implementing the iAction result interface, 
because interfaces in C Sharp allow us to do so. Once more, I'll provide a brief explanation. If we were only using content and a JSON result or any other classes or methods predefined by Netcore 7, we could return without any issues using just the action result class. However, because this endpoint's logic involves a custom class, we need to implement the iActionResult interface. Now we have specifying that the method can return any type that implements the iActionResult interface. Referring back to our previous lesson, Netcore 7 recommends using iActionResult as a universal return type solution. This allows us to mix and use predefined classes like JSON result, predefined static methods like content, and custom methods like my custom action. That's why when you create an empty MVC class, as we've done in previous lessons, the default return type of an endpoint is iActionResult. One more thing to note is that we do have the possibility to return custom logic using only the action result class. However, in this case we need to use generic types. I will make a quick change to the code and add t to our code. So with t in the my custom action class, it's a type parameter that represents the type of data that the action result will handle. When we create an instance of my custom action, we specify the type of data it will handle. And this data is then used to create a JSON result in the execute result async method. This means that our custom action result class can handle any type of data, as long as that data type can be serialized to JSON by the JSON result class. By using generics in this way, the action result class can effectively encapsulate our custom logic and data. This custom action result can then be returned from a controller action method. However, there are cases where this code with T may behave unexpectedly. Therefore, the recommended approach is to use the iActionResult interface. It's possible that you may encounter requirements, for instance, within a specific framework that mandate using only the ActionResult class as a return type. In such cases, when such strict framework logic is in place, you would have no choice but to comply and use action result as return type instead of the i action result interface. In addition, since we are using the content method, I'll briefly explain this part as well. The Netcore framework allows us to use helper methods like content, JSON file, and others as return types of action result. These methods inherit from the controller base class. We can safely use these methods because they are designed to remain unchanged by developers ensuring their reliability. These methods are used to return various types of responses from action methods. Furthermore, these methods create and return instances of the action result class without the need to explicitly create instances ourselves. For example, if we examine the content method definition, we will see that it returns the content result class. Content result inherits from the action result abstract class and the content method itself inherits from the controller base class. That's how the content method is implemented behind the scenes. It returns action result type and inherits from the controller base class. If you ever need to see all the classes available in the action result class, you can simply use IntelliSense. Set it as the return type of a method to action result and then press control space. From the drop-down list, you will see all the result classes provided by the action result abstract class. So, in essence, that's the difference of I action result versus action result. As simple as that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!